Yay. <laughs> it is so quiet. So as many of you guys know, I recently sold my 03 BMW 540i M Sport on Bring a Trailer. And if you guys were following the auction at all, you would have seen that I got a pretty terrible deal on my end. Um, I thought that throwing it on Bring a Trailer with no reserve would be the right call because people would be more willing to bid higher if they can see that there's no reserve on the car. Um, but that ultimately backfired, blew up in my face because the timing of the auction um, apparently was really bad for the seller, as in it ended basically at noon on a Tuesday. Everyone was at work or at the gym. Four or five different people commented after this, the auction ended at $6,000, um, saying that the car was like the steal of the month, if not the year. They were in work meetings, otherwise they would have bid way higher. They were expecting the car to fetch closer to $10,000. Ultimately, it's only a few thousand dollars that I could have gained if I maybe sold the car on Craigslist or something. I'm glad to pass on the car to someone else who will really appreciate it the way that I have, especially with all the work that I put into it. So after I sold that car, I was immediately in the market for something new that I could use as both a daily driver and um, an occasional track car. So I wanted something obviously for me um, that is rear wheel drive, manual transmission, but also it would need to be relatively practical. So it would need to have a decent amount of storage space. It would need to ride pretty well. Originally, I wanted a car that had a back seat, but then I thought about it and I was like, well, I've used the back seat in my 5 Series to carry people maybe like three times a year. So it really wasn't all that big of a requirement when I really thought about it. My top choice, it was always the Porsche 911 for me, right? It's an iconic car and with a 997 generation that I was looking to get, it was reasonably within my price range, definitely on the upper scale. It pretty much could do everything. It had a, a small back seat, it had a decent amount of trunk space, rear wheel drive, over 300 horsepower, reliable, or so I'm told, when all of the common issues are, are fixed. Yeah, it would have been a really good all around car, but I don't know if it's just the market has been soft lately or what exactly has been the case, but I have not been able to find one that ticks all the boxes for me. So, you know, under 100,000 miles, I was looking specifically for a 997.1 Carrera 2S, so the two-wheel drive model with the bigger 3.8 liter engine, which I hear is more reliable. Um, and I couldn't find one for, for my price range of around $30,000. And I've definitely seen them in the past couple of years for that amount, so I kind of, ran out of patience and I was like, well, let me look into some other options. So the other cars I checked out included the E92 uh, BMW M3. Um, and the reason that car was on my bucket list is because I read an old car and driver magazine article actually, and this is back before YouTube was even a thing, obviously, since the car came out in like 07, 08. They were comparing uh, E92 M3 to a 997 Carrera base model. And they basically said that E92 was more practical. It was, you know, about the same performance level, if not a little bit faster. Just overall a really exciting, you know, track-friendly car. I test drove a 2008 model, which is the first model year, it had 81,000 miles, but it was at a dealership, and I absolutely hate dealing with dealerships. So I decided to give this one a shot since the car was such a good deal. They were asking just under 21, basically $21,000 for the car. So I went to go test drive it on a Saturday morning. It drove pretty well, the clutch engaged a little high, but overall it was, it was, it drove nice, and I was pretty much ready to pull a trigger on it. When I popped the hood, on the left side of the engine, the valve cover gasket was leaking. And it had definitely been leaking for a while because it was building up some pretty nasty residue. The sales rep was like, well, you know, we do a 145 point inspection, blah, 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 before I had found this issue. And so I was like, dude, like, come on. Like, there's no way you guys missed a valve cover gasket oil leak if you're doing a 145 point inspection. So I was like, well, I'm still interested in the car, but you're just gonna 
either need to work with me on the price or, or get the valve cover gasket um, replaced first. And he was like, well, okay, let me see what I can t uh, do with my manager. So he brings over his sales manager. When I showed him the picture of the, of the leaking valve cover gasket, he was like, he just stone cold face. He was like, well, we don't haggle. The price is what it is. If you don't buy the car now, um, we have a guy who's coming with a cashier's check this afternoon. So I was like, whatever. So I walked, I walked away from that. I fell for the dealership trap once again. They're not even fully honest about the condition of the car. And when I call them out on their BS, they refuse to work with me at all, stating that, oh, some other knucklehead essentially um, is going to pick up the car because they didn't do their homework and, and look and inspect the engine bay. So at this point, I was like, well, I, I, I really like the E92 M3. It like, kind of does everything I want it to. And I just couldn't find any that were really in the condition that I wanted and for the asking price that I wanted. So I also expanded my search back out to Porsches once more. But this time, instead of typing in 911 into Craigslist, I typed in Porsche just to see what other models were out there within my price range. I, you know, I was open to getting a relatively low mile Cayman, especially because you know you can get those for quite a bit cheaper than a 911. I found this car on Craigslist less than 12 hours, I think, after it was posted. It's an 06 Cayman S, black over uh, beige interior, as you can see. 63,000 miles, always a California car. So I reached out to the owner, he sent me over a Carfax and some of the maintenance history. And I could just tell this guy was, you know, a very honest about the car. He sent me all the maintenance records, including stuff that a dealership probably would have tried to hide. So for example, uh, a few months ago, the air oil separator failed on this car, which is a very common issue. And um, the owner noticed a huge amount of white smoke pouring out of the tailpipes. Um, so they took it to the preferred shop. They replaced the air oil separator, the ignition coils, the spark plugs. And you know, this would be a big red flag, generally speaking, for someone who's looking to buy a used Porsche, right? Because everyone knows an engine replacement on a Porsche, even a Cayman or a Boxster, is a very expensive thing. So the fact that the seller was very open with it, with me about it up front was a really, really good sign. So I had it taken to my buddy Kyle's um, shop and he did a full PPI. The car is in great shape. It's got a couple of small things like the, the loose door handle, the sagging headliner, and but overall the paint's in great shape, the seats are in great shape. The car is optioned almost exactly how I would want it. I love the exterior interior color combo. It's got the sport chrono, which gives you the sport button, which I think just affects the throttle response. Heated power seats, which is a nice luxury to have for a new driver. It does not have PASM or uh, Porsche active suspension management, which I kind of did want just because it gives you the adaptive dampers with the soft mode for daily driving and then the sport mode for track or, can or canyon use. But I think the base suspension, the non-adaptive dampers are already a pretty good compromise in that regard. The car also comes with the upgraded Bose stereo, which sounds decent. I mean, not as good as some modern stuff. A lot of people say Bose stands for buy other sound equipment. But you know what, it it's definitely sounds better than the, the base stereo, so I'm pretty happy with that. The car also comes with the 18-inch Cayman S wheels. Obviously, since it is a Cayman S, it has the bigger brakes versus the base model. The one other thing I guess I wish it had was the PSD or Porsche sports exhaust. The base of this car is specced within like 80 to 90% of how I would want my 987.1 Cayman S. So what I plan to do with this car, honestly, I plan to leave it stock for now enjoy it as a daily driver, um, track it at least once or twice before I start doing mods to it. And if I even do mods to it, the very first items will be reliability mods. So the car does have a new air oil separator since that was done three months ago, but I would look into also doing the, a motorsports AOS just for more reliability. A deep sump kit since these engines do tend to experience oil starvation when tracked with you know our compound or stickier tires which granted i would probably just put you know 200 treadwear tires on this car at first but after a few track days if i decide to you know track this car more often i would definitely uh, look into a deep sump kit the car has plenty of power for my needs 295 horsepower 251 foot pounds of torque so technically this is now the most powerful car I've ever owned, which is kind of funny because I was 
telling my buddies um, that you know I've always wanted to own a car with more than 300 horsepower just because I've always been a guy who like you know prefers naturally aspirated high revving engines and those typically don't make more than around like 240 like in the S2000 or 270 in my NSX so it's kind of interesting that I ended up with another car that's just under 300 horsepower at 295 but the car is relatively light it's just under 3,000 pounds and you might be thinking why would I get a Cayman S when on paper it is so very similar to my 91 Acura NSX in so many ways. Similar power, similar weight, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, manual transmission, you know, two-seater. Well, the answer is the NSX to me, I honestly don't even treat it as like a car per se. It's something that I use as a stress reliever. It's something that I've always wanted to own just because I love, you know, the NSX and all the history behind it, the air and Senate connection, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't really use it as a way to get from point A to point B, if that makes sense. And obviously I don't want to track it because, uh, you know, the risk is just too high. Oh, just listen to that flat six. So glorious. It's got such a linear power curve, yet it still revs all the way to the top very nicely. It's not, it's not peaky like a VTEC. So it's not like I have to rev it within an inch of its life to get any kind of performance out of it. It still has a good amount of torque. I mean, it, it is a 3.4 liter flat six. I would say the overall ride comfort and the road noise that I get from the car at freeway speeds could be better. Coming from my five series, that car was basically dead silent on the freeway. It's super plush, super comfortable. Um, this car is definitely a couple notches below that in terms of refinement, but that's the trade-off. I mean, there's no way you can get a 3,000-pound mid-engine sports car that handles like this that rides as well as a 5 Series. So this is a, a trade-off that I'm more than willing to make. So in a nutshell, that's kind of why I bought this car. Definitely going to make a lot of content with this thing. It is my first Porsche, but it definitely will not be my last. Um, at some point in my life, I will own a 997 911 it's just inevitable at this point but i figured you know it's probably a little bit of a safer step to first get into a cayman and kind of experience porsche without going full blown 911 and then once i'm really ready for the 911 um you know i can make that leap so if you haven't already please remember to subscribe like the video comment etc etc i sound like such a youtuber right now thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next time